Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to do a review of the new Canon 18 to 135 millimeter. This is an f3.5 to 5.6. It is an IS, but it's not an SDM lens. It's a USM lens, and not an USM lens like anyone before. This has a new nano USM technology that is kind of a bridge between the advantages that SDM brings along with the advantages that USM focus motors bring. And so it represents a whole new technology for a Canon in its implementation. So today we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at whether or not this new lens that is being sold in a kit with the new Canon 80D, we're going to see whether or not it is a worthwhile investment over the previous generation STM lens. It's worth noting that this is now the third generation of uh, Canon 18 to 135 millimeter lenses. So the first thing that when you look at the lens itself, you see that this is a new design for the kind of design language for a Canon consumer grade zoom lens. Um, rather than the silver ring towards the front, it now has gone to more of kind of a stealth mode where it has a, a kind of a, somewhere between a matte and a satin finish with a, a really tightly flocked um, design, matte design on the barrel itself. Everything is kind of low profile here, and in fact, the only kind of accent is an even darker but shinier black ring in between the uh, nicely damped and spaced zoom ring and then the uh, focus ring towards the front of the barrel. Con compared to the STM version of the lens, there is a larger um, focus ring here, which perhaps suggests that maybe Canon thinks that people might actually use a little more than what they do on STM lenses. The design is, is kind of unique, and when I first took it out and, and I felt it, it almost has kind of a, almost a soft touch feel to the, the barrel material. And so it, it's a very different Canon type of design. And, and I thought when I looked at it and I began to use it that this, if Batman owned a lens, this would be it. It's kind of the Batman mode, black on black, blacked out kind of look. And that theme kind of continues on even to the switches themselves that are incredibly low profile. So much so to where they're not quite flush with the barrel, but when you run your finger over it, you can only feel the ridges um, of the switch itself, but not any kind of real protrusion of the actual uh, switch. And so it's nice in the sense of being smaller and implemented in the barrel, but I immediately saw that there could be an issue if you're wanting to actually disengage those switches if you're in shooting in colder weather and wearing gloves, for example, because there's, there's not a lot that's raised there to get a hold of. And, um, and so in some situations, it may not be favorable. The other thing that's here is a, a zoom lock. And the uh, lens itself shows zero inclination towards uh, zoom creep right now. I don't know that you'll actually use that all that often, perhaps as the, the lens ages over time. But uh, it's always nice to have one. And it is worth noting that it does only lock in the fully retracted position. It will not engage at any other focal length. And so um, certainly nice to have. The other thing that is new here and completely new is that along the bottom of the barrel there is now uh, a place to connect it to a new power zoom accessory that uh, Canon has launched uh, all coinciding with this particular lens and the Canon 80D and uh, that power zoom dock it kind of gives you uh, some capability of zooming that might remind you of an old camcorder, you know, with the switch that you can toggle to go from uh, wide to telephoto and zooming. You can also do some programming of the speed in which it does that. And so it's more for people that are interested in doing video shooting. And perhaps the biggest application or the best application might be if you're doing remote video shooting, which with the Canon 80D, you now can do. And, and so in doing that, it would give you the capability of actually not only focusing the lens remotely, but also zooming it as well. And so that's an optional accessory at an additional cost for those of you that might be interested in something like that. Now the lens is not tiny, but neither is it particularly large, particularly when you consider the large zoom range that it covers. It goes from 18 millimeters out to 135 millimeters, or in full frame equivalency, that's 28.8 millimeters out to 216 millimeters, which is a, a pretty fair amount of reach. That's a 7.5 times zoom range. And, you know, those of us that primarily shoot full frame, we wish that we had lenses that 
were somewhat like this and uh, because the applications for this kind of focal range are virtually limitless. So the lens itself, it is um, it's about three and three quarters inches long, or 96 millimeters. But of course, it will zoom out another two inches, or five, uh, you know, 50 millimeters out further beyond that. It's also a quite light. It weighs in at um, 1.13 pounds. That's 515 grams, and so it makes it lighter than a fair number of the recent prime lenses for full frame that I am reviewing. And so mounted on a camera, and of course I'm using a kind of a mid-size uh, camera here, either a 70D or an 80D, and mounted on a body like this, it's, it's nice and balances lightly. Um, but it's light enough that I found that by using the adapter, that it also is not unreasonable mounted on a mirrorless body. It's a little more front heavy here because of having a small grip. This is Canon's M3. In fact, I found when adapted to the uh, mirrorless body that it continues to operate very well. The image quality is good and the focus is incredible. More on that in just a little bit. I've noted that this was kind of a stealth mode in terms of its overall look and, uh, and <laughs> That certainly applies on to the Nano USM. Talk about a stealth mode shooting. It is the quietest focus system that I think I have ever used before. And it's, it's, it's just incredible that it's like all of a sudden focus happens. There's no sense of elements beginning to move. There's no sound involved with it. You just put the camera up and all of a sudden you're getting the focus confirmation that focus is locked. It is incredibly fast. In fact, compared to the STM version on the long end, Canon claims that the autofocus is more than four times faster and it certainly feels like it. This lens focuses incredibly quickly. I'm in love with this new Nano USM technology because it is just so incredible in operation. Focus is near instantaneous and in just perfectly silent. And so it really is kind of a, almost a surreal thing that instead of any, any of the typical drama that you associate with focus, it's just the lens is focused, just like that. Nano USM, it does retain the focus by wire nature of um, actual um, manual focus like STM. And so you don't actually move the elements when you um, are focusing here, but rather you're sending electronic signal through the body that then the focus motor moves the elements. I will say, however, that it does seem a little less numb to me than what STM is. And, and so it's a little bit, a little bit better, um, but still, of course, not my favorite things because there, there's just not a lot of um, tactile response from focus compared to when you're actually connecting to the elements in, in a traditional way. This lens has an incredible image stabilizer also. Um, it is, the operation of it is, is pretty close to what I would call perfect. And that once again, it's incredibly silent. You can't tell when it begins. You can't tell when it stops. It just, uh, it's just there. And in fact, when it's in operation, I can put my ear right next to the barrel and only then can I at the most faint way, hear some kind of whirring happening inside. It really just, it operates incredibly quietly. The other thing that is uh, an advantage here is that um, Canon has added a new, what they call dynamic IS or image stabilization into this specifically for video. And so it's, it's a, a mode of the image stabilizer that you don't have to select. It just automatically selects in video mode. And, and I found that it certainly makes a difference. Um, you know, you're not up to glide cam levels when you're kind of doing moving shots like this, but I found that I was able to produce smoother results than what I can recall ever doing with any other lens before. And so that's certainly a, another plus there. And so, you know, if the review stopped right here, this would be one of the, the more incredible lenses that I have reviewed in the sense of the new technologies implemented are, are really impressive. But unfortunately, the image quality has not had a similar leap forward. And if you're familiar with the image quality of the previous generation 18 to 135, you know there's a little give and take, but essentially you know the image quality of this new lens. And so compared to other kind of super zoom, all-in-one zooms, the image quality is definitely competitive with them. That being said, it never really gets completely sharp. Even if you stop down, when you look at the corners, the corners are never really exceptionally sharp with this lens. 
And, uh, and so I, what I find, uh, if I could sum it up this way, what I find is that the images look fine at a normal viewing level, but they don't hold up when you zoom in at a pixel level. Um, and it's often I find that images from the best lenses, I zoom in on, they look even better. There's just, there's so much detail there that you can't even see at a normal viewing level. It does have chromatic aberrations. I see both green and purple fringing in you know, areas of high contrast. Um, fortunately, they seem to remove fairly well by just clicking the remove chromatic aberrations box in Lightroom, also in some camera bodies. If you're a JPEG shooter, you can um, select for those to be removed within the camera itself, and it does a pretty fair job of that. Um, the bokeh itself is actually reasonably you know, reasonably good. It's not mind-blowing like some of these other lenses that I'm reviewing. Um, it does have a little bit of activity within the bokeh circle, like in highlights, but none of the onion kind of activity of the concentric circles, just a little bit of overall busyness. And then that inner line is a little bit harder than what I would like. And so that results in some harder edges and defocused areas when actually shooting with it. But if you're you zoomed out towards the long end of the focal range, you can actually produce a, a surprising amount of blur out backgrounds and that makes it nice for those of you that want an all-in-one lens it will also enable you to, to shoot some portraits and so it can be effective for that if you use it properly it does have some fairly strong barrel distortion on the wide end and so the the center bulges out at 18 millimeters and then at the far end there's a little bit of pin course or pin cushion distortion where the center kind of sucks in a bit, but uh, it's far less extreme than what the barrel distortion is on the wide end. Um, it does vignette, particularly at 18 millimeters wide open, but not incredibly bad. About the maximum, the extreme corners is about one three quarter stop. And that's, that's relatively mild compared to some other lenses. And it does flare some when you point it into the sun. It's got some veiling along with some little blobs of ghosting. If you stop down, it seems to improve that some overall, particularly the veiling, although a few of the ghosts um, will remain. I think the sun stars, when stopped down, are actually pretty decent from it. That leads us, of course, to the point that Canon continues to persist in not including a lens hood um, with uh, its consumer grade non-L series lenses. That's kind of disappointing, frankly, in a, a lens that cost $600. And particularly when you consider that uh, Tamron has a budget 18 to 200 millimeter um, VC lens that came out this past year that cost, um, you know, typically the maximum price is $249 and it's often on sale for $199. And it came with a lens hood. And not only came with a lens hood, it has at least some, um, some weather sealing on it with the gasket around the edge. And I don't know what degree of internal sealing, but at least something there. And this lens continues to lack anything like that, like all of Canon's EFS lenses. And so, you know, for some of you that want to do travel, that may push you towards the, you know, the other end of some other manufacturer because you'll get the lens hood, which is an additional cost. And uh, you would also get a little bit of weather sealing. That being said, the autofocus and the function of this lens is uh, it's, it's far more impressive than any other kind of consumer grade zoom lens that I've used before. In fact, it's also that Nano USM also does an exceptional job when tracking. And I found that um, with the new ADD, when I was trying to track action, that this lens had no problem keeping up. It also retains the excellent ability of the STM lenses of producing very smooth video. And so if you want a lens that can kind of do everything, much like the new ADD that it's a, a kit lens for, it really is a great choice. Um, the Nano USM is incredibly impressive. The image stabilizer is very, very good. You have some new options uh, with that new power zoom accessory. But at the same time, it's not going to be the cheapest of the options available to you. Also kind of surprising right now is that while the lens is available in kit with the ADD, there's actually no price advantage for buying it that way. The price is identical, $599, whether you buy it in kit or you buy it separately. I suspect that that will soon change in the near future. And then I think that this, this lens is going to provide a, a great value when it is discounted in a kit application. 
I hope this review today has helped you out if you're considering purchasing this lens either on its own or in kit with the new Canon 80D. I also encourage you to take a look at the written review of this lens on my website. There I will provide both more information as well as more thorough documentation of some of the areas that I've covered here today. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.